Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we'll be looking at some scroll saw projects I did with this DeWalt scroll saw. Now previous to this saw, I had a Delta that was about 30 years old. So I have some videos that have me using that scroll saw and a uh, big difference. This doesn't vibrate nearly as much. Now I wanted to be proficient at this saw so I did a few projects first. This little one to the left here is the first one of the things that I did or the second one of the things that I did. And uh, I'll, sh I'll share some of the, my other projects with you. All right, so this is my first project I ever did on the, uh, on the squirrel saw. Uh, it was a little ambitious for the first but you can see it it works kinda. I did have to use a two-part epoxy right there to fix that uh, particular gear because uh, it kind of splintered off. It's Baltic birch. Uh, everything flat that I've done with this is Baltic birch apply. Uh, but this is really cool. It, it was a learning experience. The slightest bit off in any direction will make a huge difference with uh, whether it works or not. And, and it, this particular one has uh, a little too much play here. If I tighten it up, it won't turn it all. But if I turn it like that, it does. It will work. It spins all the way around. This is my second. This is what's called an intarsia. Now I did cut it out of one board, but different pieces of the board because I tried to get the grain to go in the direction of the fins uh, and the grain of, of this. The, so these are all from different areas of a same board. If you were to just lay the pattern down and cut it out, it's called sectional, I believe. And then uh, by using different types of wood or wood trying to use the grain, it's called intarsia, which is a very old uh, European, uh, they used to use it in, in furniture, in furniture making. So with a scroll saw, you can also uh, cut out your blanks for small carvings. Um, hummingbirds easily fit. The, the height of what you can push through one of those blades is about two and a quarter inches. So uh, this, you can easily cut out this blank with a scroll saw. Um, scroll saw is probably the only safe way you can cut something round like a dowel. If you push a dowel into a bandsaw, a bandsaw will, will catch that dowel and, and spin it forward. Um, it, it can be dangerous. It could pull your hand into it. Uh, so round things, uh, because of the nature of a scroll saw, is up and down, more like a sewing machine. Um, it's less likely to catch and spin something round like a dowel. I've been carving dowels for for about 40 years. That's how I started. It was one of the first uh, pieces of wood I picked up was a dowel and, and carved it and basically learned to carve by carving dowels. Um, and wasn't introduced into basswood until I did my first decoy. So... Um, if you want to put initial cuts into a dowel to do a dowel carving, scroll saw is the way to do it. So this is going to be a license plate frame for my car. Um, what I simply did is laid out an old license plate frame and expanded areas. I also 
you know, held it up to my car and measured to see where I could get a little extra space for mounting, uh, like the paintbrush and the carving knife and a, and a chisel, and to make this as, as big as I could, just to make it easier to read. Uh, and this is what we're gonna be working on today. So this is how I'm gonna get started. This is 1 8 inch. Baltic birch. Uh, I laid the laid my uh, frame out and then expanded it both width here and here. Um, the particular car I'm making this for has more space here, so I was able to really to to make this much bigger. And this is going to be my carving knife. This is going to be my paintbrush. It's just a dowel, but we're going to carve a paintbrush out of that dowel. And that's going to be our carving gouge. We'll buy some low profile wooden letters to go here. You can see here, uh, this is going to be the inside. So this is just going to be waste. I'm going to be, I'm going to end up removing this. I'll save that piece because it's going to come out in one big chunk. These holes are the bolt holes for the bolt to go through. And these holes on the inside of these lines is, is where we're just going to cut it out. So we're going to cut a little along here. And cut that all out center will be waste and uh, I might cut the outside with a, a bandsaw it's a lot quicker and just so you know the blanks for all these little guys could all be cut out on the scroll saw All right, so we'll start off with carving the paintbrush. And I've, I've done several versions. I used the th uh, thicker dowel, um, and that would work. But I like the, the thinner one, uh, the thinner version of that. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, we'll say that... Um, this will be the bristles here and then this part and we'll make it big so it's recognizable. I may change it a little bit. We'll see how we'll see how this works out to begin with. Always leave your options open. All right, I already changed the size here already. You can see the old line here, I erased it um, because I'm trying to get it more closely to this, which is on the plate. Backside's flattened out. After I carved it to the round, then I flattened it out on the back to give it a gluing surface. And then I'll put a couple of mechanical um, brad nails through it to hold it in place. I'm just looking at the green, trying to figure out how I can use that to my advantage. I'm going to make the tip actually up here and swoop it down to help give it some movement.
So here I'm just spinning the dowel around in my hand, just taking a little bit, trying to basically find the center so the, the point is centered within the dowel. So it kind of looks like a paintbrush. Now, you see how I put the dowel down on the, to the table. Whenever you're carving uh, and you have the luxury of anchoring it to a table like that for stability, it's that's a nice trick. That's a nice thing to do. Uh, it keeps the knife blade from just like flinging around out into the open air. Often when I'm filming, I will try to hold the piece closer to the camera and so I rarely uh, brace it on a table. This is another very safe way. It's like peeling a potato. But that, by doing it like that, you're a very safe way of carving. <clears throat> so I use the same size dowel to do both of these and you can see how this one is more chunky than this one is slimmer. So you can really kind of custom customize these things to what you want them to look like, what's, what's in your mind, what's, what vision do you have. Really limitless. The one thing I am noticing about this dowel is that I believe it's made out of, this one is made out of pine you can see the dark rays here of the grain of this wood and those dark lines are are the hard they're harder than the wood in between this wood in here is soft soft pine and and the dark line you here see is the grain and that's much harder in this dowel so it, it's uh, not uniform, and so when you're carving it, uh, you'll, you'll hit these dark lines. They'll be hard to carve through, and then you'll hit the lighter pine, and your knife will fly through that like nothing. Uh, so it, it takes a little bit more uh, control. You really have to anchor your hand when you're carving pine. I'm used to carving pine. I started off with sugar pine for years. Um, carved sugar pine before I did uh, carved basswood or anything else. So I'm fairly used to it when I when my bullet when I feel the blade start to hit those. Uh, tough pieces of grain um, I automatically go into like an anchoring mode uh, it's uh, yeah after you cut yourself a bunch of times you learn <laughs> learning the hard way uh, hopefully you'll learn from this and not the hard way All right, so I just took 100 grit sandpaper to this and sanded it down all the way. And I sanded it to the lowest divot mark that I could find on here, making the surface smooth. So you can see that <clears throat> leaving it thicker gives it a shorter appearance, really. You know, took this away, you would think it was shorter. But when you put them up side by side, the thinner makes it longer, or appear longer. So when you get it down to where you want it, I took a little V-gouge and carved 
in like little lines into here give it a little extra detail you could do it with a burner you could see here on on this one v gouge gives a little character and that's it for the paintbrush For the knife, I simply uh, practically traced this off of an actual knife, especially the, the blade itself. The handle I improvised a little bit, I, you know, I brought it in a little more here and a little more here for, for style and design, but um, flattened the back to give it a better contact surface. I will use an all-purpose outdoor glue uh, and I will use brad from a nail gun, two, two brads in each one of these to give it a mechanical hold as well. The inside of the gouge here, I just used a little palm gouge to get that scoop look, the gouge look. This was actually fun fun to carve, uh, but it really doesn't bring on any character until you paint it. When you paint it, then, then it starts to look like what you want it to look like. These are just letters that I got from Amazon, and you can see that they're they're really thin and they're uh, apply which I, I like for outdoor stuff if it were indoor maybe I would go a little thicker solid wood but uh, this will be this will hold up well outside all right glue up time I'm going to try this glue. It is a indoor outdoor and it dries clear. So that's why I'm going to use it on this because it dries clear. If there's any squeeze out, uh, it won't be terribly obvious. So I'm going to glue it up first and then we'll shoot some uh, pin nails into it. there. Dab.
All right, I'm out in the garage now. The glue on this is somewhat set up, so it's they're on there nice and stable. The glue will hold it in place while I put these little brad nails in. A Milwaukee pen nailer. This is a great little tool. It's expensive. It was at least $220 or $30. It's one of those things I had to save up for, but it is so worth it. It is a very high quality pen nailer. Now what I'm gonna do, I, I have a foam here, and the foam will allow me to, as I shoot through this, it's gonna go through the wood, through the plate, all the way through, and I'll be able to pull it out of the foam and cut off the back. You don't want to drive it from the back side forward because it will, it will split out the front. So we have a safety. We pull that. Boom. Little tiny pin nails. Having mechanical fasteners like this will prevent... And see, we have just these little bits of nails sticking through. But I have a mechanical fastener here and here, which will really hold that on there. I'll take a, a small Dremel and grind the back of those pins right off. Beautiful. All right, and it's just a little M12 Milwaukee battery. Worth the investment. Now I will cover it with a spar urethane. It's an oil base. I will cover this multiple times, multiple times. And still, probably about every six months, it may need a touch-up if it's outside in the sun and the weather. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.